in a world where novel materials are engineered at the atomic scale, there is one that stands out from the rest. It is the wonder material of the 21st century that consists of only one layer of oriented carbon atoms. Being so thin, graphene is also invisible for the unaided eye and therefore powerful state-of-the-art techniques such as the scanning electron microscope must be used for studying its properties in greater detail. Hello science enthusiasts! In this episode we will study graphene with our scanning electron microscope and discuss how this novel material can be used in some upcoming technologies. There are actually different types of graphene available in the market and one of the cheapest is a powder-like substance called graphene oxide. It is produced by chemically breaking apart graphite, where the graphene sheets are separated from one another. Graphene oxide is usually sold in a plastic bottle like this. When completely filled, the powder inside weighs only a few grams and costs about 100 euros or more. The price depends on the seller but also on the properties and quality of graphene oxide. A single layer of high-quality graphene, on the other hand, can be produced, for instance, by chemical vapor deposition on a metal substrate. Afterwards, the metal substrate is usually removed by etching in order to free the graphene and use it for a variety of purposes. This single layer of graphene is much more expensive than graphene oxide, as only a few square centimeters can cost several hundreds of euros. Now it's time to discuss the sample preparation which is crucial for studying these elusive materials under the scanning electron microscope. Graphene oxide and similar powders can be prepared for such studies in two ways. The simplest solution is to apply them on a sticky carbon tape or silver paste. Another option is making a suspension by using deionized water or an organic solvent and treat it by ultrasonification to separate the particles from one another. Next, a small quantity of the suspension is extracted with a pipette and applied on a conductive substrate, which is then dried to remove the medium. Our second sample type is a high-quality single-layer graphene, and usually it is on a solid substrate that is already suitable for scanning electron microscopy studies. All you need is a mechanical holder to fixate the sample before inserting it into the microscope. Anyhow, our samples are now ready, so let's start with graphene oxide and unravel its secrets in unprecedented detail. The first thing that we noticed at the start of our studies was that the mass of dried graphene oxide has large microscopic cracks, but also fairly large uniformly covered areas. By imaging one of these areas at greater magnification, the delicate structure of graphene oxide becomes visible revealing the one-atom thick sheets that are wrinkled like paper and form a sophisticated three-dimensional structure that has a vast surface area. Next, we will take a look at graphene that was synthesized by chemical vapor deposition at the laboratory of thin film technology. As can be seen from the image, Brighter and darker areas can clearly be distinguished on the surface of the copper substrate. When we zoom in, it becomes clear that the brighter area is actually a single layer of graphene, while the darker sites represent two or more layers. The color difference between the two regions can be explained as follows. The electron yield from higher atomic number areas is slightly greater in comparison with lower atomic number areas and this makes them appear brighter on the secondary electron image. This also means that the more layers of oriented carbon atoms we have on the surface of copper, the smaller the electron yield becomes, and the darker the regions appear on the image. As a result, we can easily distinguish single-layer graphene from multi-layer graphene. Now that you have seen how graphene actually looks like, we can talk about some upcoming graphene-based technologies that attempt to exploit the unique properties of this novel material. For instance, 
graphene oxide can be included into other materials to enhance their chemical resistance, mechanical properties and electrical conductivity. This has led to some novel thin corrosion resistant coatings, more durable polymers and conductive glues. Here at the Institute of Physics of the University of Tartu, however, the group of sensor technologies and the laboratory of thin film technology are developing graphene-based sensors that can detect smaller quantities of toxic gases in cities, which is difficult or even impossible with conventional gas sensors. For that purpose, graphene is transferred onto electrical contacts and modified with pulsed laser deposition to create functional groups. If gas enters the small detector, which can even be attached to a cell phone, then the gases interact with these functional groups. As a result, the electrical resistance of graphene changes, and this is an electrical value that can easily be measured to calculate the concentration of toxic gases. Thank you for watching our science video about graphene. If you want to see the scanning electron microscopy images presented in this video in greater detail, then you can do so in our online gallery. The link can be found in the description. This is Captain Corrosion, your number one source for knowledge.